Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well today. I'd love to talk to you about how we prepare for a pen test or at least how I do at times. I'm going to talk about the phases of a pen test. I'm going to talk about my test plan a little bit. I'm going to talk about picking a methodology. So first of all, let's talk about the phases of a pen test real quick. And this is a little bit of my own adaptation to it as well, because officially there are only five recognized phases to a pen test. I know, but for me, it encompasses a bit more than that. And I know that, of course, you have your normal recon phase, you have your scanning phase, uh, etc. But this is kind of what I've made of this. And this is sort of the process that I go through with my company whenever I start a new pen test. It all starts for me with the initial phase. It starts with a meeting with the client, scope definition, any documentation that can be made is being made, like contracts, NDAs, test plans. And this phase is basically to get you started, to um, push that initial... It's like you get your uh, assignment, you get asked, hey, would you like to do a pen test for us? You start up your meeting and everything begins, basically. Now, when we move on to recon, that's when we'll talk about taking in more of that documentation that we have available to us. So this can be documentation about current existing workings of the application. This can be documentation about the application that we find on Google that has been sent to us. Um, but it's all to prepare us for the real deal, for the real pen test, basically. In this phase, we'll also have an in initial investigation of the attack surface and we'll start to define our testing methodology. Scans are also done, such as parameter brute forcing, to see if we can't increase our attack surface a little bit. Then we're going to define that attack surface. What do we have in front of us with all of the relevant endpoints, parameters, all of the functional flows, all of the objects that we have in front of us, everything that describes our application and that might be important or relevant in that case. Then, of course, after we have our attack surface, we're going to need to do some threat modeling. And we're going to go over every single endpoint parameter and compare it to the coverage that we want to grab, the OWASP top 10. And we're going to see if, we're, if we can't find any potential vulnerabilities, if we can predict any issues that might be present. That's a threat model. Now, we can use checklists, or at least for our intents and purposes. We can choose a checklist. Um, which is the OS top 10, CWE, network pen testing checklist, whatever checklist it may be, I think it is very wise to do so because of course we are all human and we forget things. It's natural. So even if you've done something for the 50th time, that is when you run the biggest risk of even just forgetting something in my opinion because you've already done it for the 50th time. There might be 500 steps to it. You might be forgetting one step. Well, that is a piece of coverage that is missing. So it is very important to at least use some general guidelines and checklist in this phase of the uh, pen test. Now, we want to define our use cases and our tech scenarios of those use cases. Here we're also going to refine the required tool section and we're going to try to be as complete as possible. This can take a very long time. This together with the test case creation and the scanning part can take a lot longer than the execution part because I always say 70% preparation, 30 shoot warrant only 30% execution. The thing is, if you've been prepared really, really well, then when it comes down to execution, it's literally simply a matter of executing what you've already have prepared. So this is a big part of that preparation for me. And that also includes the scanning, of course. I'm mostly trying to find information here. I'm not literally vulnerability scanning. 
might try to increase my attack surface here which has to undergo additional threat modeling then of course but after that follows the test case creation so test case creation is very important to me based on my threat modeling i'm going to say what i'm going to need to do to execute those threats this doesn't have to be a very extensive oh do step one do step two do step three no i want to define test intentions but i do want to define it for myself so i don't forget anything and while i'm executing i know that my test intentions may change and they might not be what they were originally but that is sort of also part of the plan is that exploratory testing which will come on to later for me coverage does matter a lot though so i want to determine some metrics by which I can measure my coverage. Again, up to 70% of your time goes into the previous steps. It can take quite a long time should you always put exactly 70% and no, it's a guideline. It's just to indicate that the majority of the work can go into your preparation. It's okay and it's better to be prepared than to be unprepared and to have to think of everything on the spot. That being said, you don't want to over prepare in the wrong areas either and not have any test intentions ready for when the pen test actually starts. Now, as for the execution, you want to execute your test cases. There you want to guarantee that your coverage has been acquired, that you have found what you needed to find and that your target can rest a little bit easier knowing that it has been hacked by a professional. We want to keep some room open for exploratory testing here and we want to keep track of the results while we are doing that. Usually I like to keep some little notepad ready and also a document in which I can put screenshots and all of that so that when I'm writing my report it will be a lot easier for me and then I can make a more comprehensive guide and I can be sure to also include a debriefing to my client which can be like a video file or a little bit of an audio file something which says this is the state of your environment, machine, website, whatever you asked me to test for. Remediation steps here help a lot and yes I do think it's very important for the professional in security to at least give their opinion on remediation steps I really do trust every developer, believe me, but sometimes they might want some guidance in fixing issues as well because it might be some issue type that they've never heard of before. Well, in that case, because believe me guys, I've seen some really advanced developers who are not that good in the security type of things of it. That's okay, everybody has their own speciality, but they will be very good at one specific thing. Like the guy that I'm talking about, he knew how to juggle programming languages like it was nothing. But he, every time I was talking about broken access control, IDORs, he kind of vaguely knew what I was talking about. But he was like, okay, how do you trigger that exactly? What's your process? How do you test for that kind of thing? And I know that it might seem simple, of course, those vulnerability types. But if you look into them deeper, they do have a deeper rooted background. Anyway, that's basically what I'm trying to say about the phases of pen testing that I try to stick to. Um, when it comes to my test plan, I try to at least include a version header in which I'm going to display which version I am on, what changes have been made, and the person responsible for those changes. I'm going to put in a section for a project description a goal of a pen test as well i might put that in a separate section or under the project description depending on my customer and then i have a scope section in which i'm going to detail my in scope and my out of scope items and assets which i really have to be careful with those out of scope items of course so every time i'm testing i'm going to be extra careful not to touch those but i can at least refer back to the scope section here then I have my contacts as well. That's going to be the pen tester with their contact details, the client with their contact details. Everybody's relevant goes into this section. 
When it comes to methodology, there are several we can pick, more on that later, and then we have constraints and assumptions as well. The name says it all on that one. Then we're going to include our threat model as well in our test plan and our reporting strategy. Like, shall I report every week? Shall I report every day? Um, shall I report at the end of the project? It depends from customer to customer, of course. When it comes to methodologies, there are quite a few we can pick up, or at least I know of five. <laughs> it says like there's more here, but the ones that I know of, there's five. Um, basically NIST 800-115 is a much more general purpose one. Same for PTES. Then we have the OS Web Security Testing Guide and OSSTMM. But basically there isn't one for API testing, there isn't really one for mobile testing, and of course everybody has their own methodologies, kind of, but to make a real comprehensive methodology, I think, might be a good challenge. So if anybody feels up to the challenge, I would love to hear from you, uh, and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers!